In this video, we're gonna talk about GDAC security. Anytime you're gonna use a service and you're gonna give this service your funds, your, your hard earned money, you're gonna to wanna to definitely look into their security policy because that's how your funds are gonna stay safe. All right, so we're gonna do that in this video. Go to GDAX.com, which is where we are here, and then scroll down to the bottom of the page to security. We click on security statement. First thing to notice, like we talked about before, we're at now coinbase.com slash security. The reason we're at Coinbase is because GDAX is a Coinbase company. They tell us security for your peace of mind. We take careful measures to ensure that your Bitcoin is as safe as possible. It's exactly what we want. Scrolling down further, and they mention this on their homepage, 98% of customer funds are stored offline. So that means these things are not touching the internet. So a hacker sitting at their computer somewhere anywhere around the world, they're not going to be able to access these systems because they are offline systems. Offline storage provides important security measures against theft or loss. This is another important piece. We distribute Bitcoin geographically in safe deposit boxes and vaults around the world. So what do they mean we distribute Bitcoin? What they mean is they distribute the private keys to customer wallets around the world geographically. So that means suppose they had all of the customer wallets just sitting on one server in say California and there was a big fire that happened and all the servers were destroyed. Well, all the customer funds would be lost. And so they've taken measures here to distribute them geographically graphically around the globe. They mentioned here again that sensitive data is, that, that's on their servers is disconnected entirely from the internet. Then they talk about their encryption and their redundancy. So redundancy means they have multiple copies of it. They talk about here USB drives and paper backups. So these are going to be the thing, the offline pieces, and they're redundant. So that means that there's not there's no one location that if that location was destroyed, then those funds will be lost because they've got it, they're they're redundant and they're backed up. And then here they are, they're mentioning that these drives and paper backups are distributed geographically around the globe. So that's that distributed. You have multiple locations where the same information resides. So let's go ahead and scroll down and take a look. They mention here two-step verification on all accounts. What is two-step verification? The first step in verification is your username and password. So that's one-step verification. Now the second step is going to be what they say here. You will enter a code from your mobile phone adding an extra layer of security. So that second piece, that's the second step. That's that code that you're going to get in your phone. They're not calling it out here, but they have two different ways of offering two-step verification. They have SMS, which is when you're going to get a text message, and then they also offer the use of Google Authenticator. We're going to go over how to use these in, an, in a future video, but until we do that video, if you are using the SMS, you're going to want to switch and use a Google Authenticator because it's a lot more secure. Hackers can actually clone your phone. They can gain access to your text messages. So what you're going to want to do is use the Google Authenticator option. We'll talk about that more in future videos. Okay, let's scroll down a little bit further. Now this is, they're telling us that they use SSL, HTTPS. So we look up here, we got HTTPS. This means that our, our data transmission on this website from Coinbase servers to our current machine, it, that data transmission was encrypted. So anybody sitting in the middle capturing that data, they wouldn't be able to read it. And that's a, it says our web traffic runs entirely over encrypted SSL. Now, now they talk about their wallets and private keys are stored using AES-256 encryption. This is industry standard. Now, scrolling down more they give us more details they're giving us details about the organization application and authentication so let's take a look they give us two pieces of information about employees they say employees got they have to pass a background check in order to get hired and they also say employees are required to encrypt their hard drives utilize strong passwords and enable screen locking maybe an employee takes their machine home and then their machine gets stolen it might have some information on there so they're saying that all employees have to have their hard drives encrypted and they have to use a strong password this next piece is application piece this piece gets technical they call out the fact that they use SQL injection filters and they talk about to prevent cross-site request forgery attacks they use they verify the authenticity of the post put and delete request now if you're technical and you want to read up on cross-site request forgery attacks I'm gonna leave a link to that wiki page in the description that's what this CSRF stands for so if you want to if you don't know about that and you want to look into it more I'm gonna leave a link in the description down below regardless of if you're technical or not you can understand this they say they they rate limit a variety of of actions on the site. So what does that mean? That means you can't you can't try to log in a huge number of times. So typically if there's a hacker and they're trying to break into your account, what they're going to have is they're going to have a program that will be able to try to log in thousands, you know, of times per second. What's going to happen if they try that, then they're going to get the rate limit is going to kick in and it's going to it's going to slow them down, make it to where it's not really feasible for them to sit there and try to brute force your your password. 
And then they talk about here, they whitelist attributes on all models to prevent mass alignment vulnerabilities. This is another thing if you're technical, I'm gonna leave a link to this down in the description. This next one, authentication, says they hash their passwords stored in the database. They check for strong passwords on account creation and application credentials are kept separate from database and code base. So what's the code base? The code base is the actual source code of all their applications. They're saying that their passwords are kept separate. That's a good practice. Coinbase bug bounty program. We're gonna take a look at that in the next video. Last thing I wanna mention in this video is actually another video. This video is titled Fraud Prevention at Scale and it was a talk given by Olive Carlson we about a year ago. Now, even though this video is a year old, it's still very relevant to security at Coinbase because in this talk about halfway through, it's a 20 minute talk about 11 minutes in, he starts talking about Coinbase and the security at Coinbase and how they handle all of the things that we went over. It goes in a lot more detail about it. And I think the way he talks about it and the way he explains it, it, he does it quite well. So be sure to check out this video. I'm gonna leave a link in the description down below. I hope this video was helpful. Please like the video, subscribe and support this Deep Lizard channel. Thank you.